Living Clean, Living Well is a presentation of the Canadian Centre for Abuse Awareness and is brought to you by Freedom From Addiction. It's Sunday night and you're watching Living Clean, Living Well. Hello everyone, I'm Teresa Cruz. So glad to see you tonight, glad that you're here. Well, tonight we are talking about a very controversial subject matter, something that is highly addictive and found in every corner store. It's tobacco, nicotine. Tonight we're gonna to be talking about smoking, specifically quitting smoking, as well as all of your general questions. As always, if you have anything that you would like to talk about in any sort of substance abuse or addiction, trauma, we're here to talk to you as well. But we always start off with a topic, so we'd like to hear from you tonight as well as we sort through this. Joining me on tonight's panel, Dr. Vera Tarman, our regular contributor, medical director at Renaissance, and Christina Gordon, naturopathic doctor. So good to have you back with us again. Thank you, Teresa. So I thought this would be really great to talk about it from two different points of view but with the same goal in mind mm -hmm. right yep. right <laughs> traditional medicine naturopathic um, medicine maybe not a different view a different tactic something uh, you know the way that people approach things on how that you can get through the areas of quitting smoking mm -hmm. uh, dr. Tarman um, your your thoughts on on the whole subject about quitting smoking it's come up often here on the show mm-hmm um, I, well, I'm not sure what you mean. I think it's, a, a, it, it's, it's, I think that we should try to quit smoking. There's no question about it. Well, definitely, give but me, you, you, <laughs> give me your you were, you were also, um, a smoker in mm -hmm. the past. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, there's so many people, I guess my point, my, the way that I was approaching this is everybody says that we need to quit smoking, mm -hmm. but so many people are still doing it, finding it so hard to quit. Yeah. What's the hard and fast line on smoking? Well, I, I think that the, the big question is how, how to quit. Should you do it cold turkey or should you do it in the various tapering methods that we have? I personally did it cold turkey and I think that that's probably, although it's maybe the bitterest one to s take initially, it's probably the easiest in the long term because it's quick and fast and dirty. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, a lot of people are, you know, they want to put their toe in the, in the water very slowly and so there's various methods of which I can talk about uh, to help you get off of it in a slow way. But the goal is, is you want to get off. Yeah. Yeah. And Christina, some of your clients, I was talking to you earlier, uh, we were talking on the phone, and I said, do you get a lot of people that come in to ask you, how do I quit smoking in a very naturopathic way? And you said? All the time. <laughs> it happens. We all want to quit the, our little vices, mm -hmm. and naturopathic medicine has a lot of um, modalities that it can use to help people ease the side effects of um, quitting the nicotine withdrawal. And um, I find that with a holistic program, that um, cleaning your blood and cleaning your body really makes the transition, if you're doing a cold turkey, possible. Mm. Tell, us possible. A, tell us about how the body works when you talk about cleaning the blood and how that can help you get over the cravings. So basically, the minute you abstain from smoking, your body starts to um, go through a, a processes towards healing. So your lung mucous membranes start to clear. There can be uh, residue from that and things like simple things like vitamin C, vitamin A can heal those mucous membranes and prevent um, disharmony in the body as you quit. Most specifically though, um, we clean the blood with um, blue-green algae um, to chelate the, the toxins that are left in the body from years of smoking. And that when you do that, um, you don't get the same blood surges of nicotine that can make you relapse. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Dr. Tarman, from your point of view, from a traditional point of view, mm -hmm. how are you able to help somebody quit smoking? Well, uh, as I said, there's different methods that you can use. And so um, usually people, uh, if they're going to do cold turkey, they're going to do it without my help. They're mm -hmm. usually coming because they want to do uh, some kind of tapering method. And the classic one has been uh, the nicotine patch or gum. And, and that's premised on the idea that you're substituting the nicotine, um, so you're still getting, and sometimes the same amount of nicotine, because I think the 21 milligram patch, which you put on every day, is equivalent to a pack of cigarettes. So it's the same. But, but the, uh, the principle is that you're um, putting, um, uh, rather than smoking the substance, which is the fastest way to the brain and the, the quickest way to the brain, you're putting it on your skin, which is a little slower, or you're chewing it, which is a little slower. Um, and so that the, you're, you're sort of reducing the addictive uh, pr uh, punch um, uh, to it. 
so that, and, and then if you uh, go from f 21 milligrams to 14 milligrams to 7 milligrams and you cut it up to 3.5 milligrams, you slowly, 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 it's kind of like you're going through a very slow but not so painful withdrawal process. Mm -hmm. You really have a choice of do it all fast and quick and big or slow and long. And uh, so the patch is one way to do that. The other thing that people will suggest is, uh, uh, or, or that we, the doctor will suggest is a, a medication. So uh, traditionally, um, Wellbutrin or Zyban was the drug that was used, and you know it 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 was supposedly to decrease the cravings, um, and it does seem to work. Um, and I don't know if that's because the person thinks that it will, the placebo effect, or if it really does, but it does seem to work. It, people say that after a couple of weeks, which is how long it takes for it to start working. Um, uh, their, their cravings are reduced to the point where they can quit. Mm -hmm. If somebody is dealing with um, many addictions, perhaps they are dealing mm -hmm. with alcoholism or perhaps they're dealing with you know, a, an addiction to heroin, cocaine, mm -hmm. um, there are some programs that say you have to be, it's abstinence based, mm -hmm. so you're off of everything. What, what's your feeling towards that? Um, uh, I, that, might, that, that? That may well be the case in the uh, States. I actually don't know of any Canadian programs that would go to that extent. Maybe, maybe. Um, uh, because generally the thinking has been, um, smoking is not as bad as the others, so let's leave it alone and, and we'll just you know, quit, quit the, the, the worst ones first, like mm -hmm. alcohol and, and uh, um, uh, heroin or something like that. Um, but uh, so, so that's sort of, sort of been the common rule of thumb is to do that. But the research, is, even coming out of CAMH in the last five years or so, has been to support an ab a total abstinence-based model that uh, um, it appears to be that when a person is smoking, um, there is a trigger uh, on, on this sort of subconscious level to drink. So you're going to be better if you quit all of them at once, even mm. though it's harder. And so they found that then, yes, there's they a did, trigger. Yeah, they did find that. Uh, and, and if you're in a context already where you're in, in supportive care to quit, then why not do mm. it uh, rather than try to do it on your own? Mm -hmm. But it's hard. It's a hard pill to swallow. Oh, yeah. We yeah. got so many phone calls about it as well. Yes. Uh, Dr. Gordon, from a naturopathic point of view, your, your thought on abstinence totally or one thing at a time? Um, I think it depends on the individual and what the individual's mandate is and what their reasons for wanting to quit because without um, a high level of commitment to abstinence, mm -hmm. it's very hard. Mm -hmm. So I think you need to manage you know, how much stress is that individual under um, and you have to be compassionate to, to the people. You know? mm -hmm. So I think it's easy to say um, in some of those programs, yes, you have to quit everything, but I think for the human, who's facing breaking up with this friend mm -hmm. that, that helped them paradoxically cope with stress mm -hmm. because you, you, some people feel like they're you know, managing their stress but actually the metabolic reactions in the body are, are, are contrary in telling the body that they're very stressed. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that um, you have to have a foundation in place that the person has to feel safe and supported and like they have a plan that will lead to their success. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Tarman, are you willing to share your journey when you decided to give up smoking? Um, sure. Uh, when I, when I uh, quit smoking, um, I, uh, I remember that I was somebody who, um, I loved smoking. I just really liked the whole process of the whole image and I liked the, the action of it and all that. But I, I remember that I was one of those people who got um, a really strongly allergic reaction and I was always coughing, coughing, coughing. I had these huge gobs of Kleenex that I had to carry with me all the time, you know, in my 20s having to do that. So, so um, uh, and I see this all happen all the time. People, you know, I would go jogging, coughing, 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 and then having a cigarette right after. It's like so silly. But anyway, um, I, when I, uh, I decided to quit, I had the, uh, the model of my father. And I, I, th I really think having a model of success is helpful. Um, he was somebody who was a 40-year uh, pack-a-day smoker, mm -hmm. and he quit uh, cold turkey. So I thought, if he can do it, so can I. Um, and uh, so I quit cold turkey. And uh, as I was telling you earlier, um, I knew that the oral fixation, I didn't want to eat. Of course, I did um, eat a lot of candies and, and whatnot. And they actually tell you to do that, eat, eat little candies, um, which I don't, wouldn't recommend now for people to do. But I actually thought it's, it's an oral fixation, so I'll just make an oral fixation. And um, I would... Um, um, uh, uh, either do like a toothpick, which is what some people said, but I actually found what was more helpful was 
a, a pacifier, like a baby pacifier. So in the privacy of my own home, not outside <laughs> where people would see me, I would just chew on that thing. Yeah. Um, and it really helped. It really helped for I've the first couple of weeks. I've seen people do that with straws as well. Yeah. So you're just chewing on Yeah, them. just chewing because you want that thing. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. And, the, and that worked. It, How it long worked. was it until yeah. the cravings went away? Um, I'd say probably about three weeks. And I knew that I could not even have a puff from somebody else's cigarette. I was just intu intu intuitively knew that. Maybe my father told me. Yeah. Um, and when I, when I uh, uh, so that it, it took about three weeks. And then I became the most obnoxious anti-smoker, which I see happening. It's a pattern that I see happening. Um, if you're a smoker and you quit, um, that that um, then you it's like even the smell of smoke go away leave you have to go outside and uh -huh. smoke that sort of thing and I, I I adopted that posture for about five years now I don't like it but I'm a little more sympathetic yeah yeah I find my throat just literally shuts down and closes when but somebody is yeah. around smoke yeah. yeah I just I cannot breathe uh. and you were saying that that happens to you as well yeah um, well my Sorry, mom, but my mom used to smoke <laughs> as a as a when I was little, and so that was my number one inspiration to not pick up the habit myself. Um, yeah. But it, the as you were saying, um, you know, people are allergic to it, and so yeah. the the scent of it is a, a body cue. Uh, we want to avoid that that danger. Yeah. And in some of my preparation um, for this show, um, I came across the suggestion for people who are exposed to secondhand smoke. That they might want to take, um, you know, 500 milligrams of vitamin C every day, mm. as well as another antioxidant, um, some vitamin E, because just having antioxidants bioavailable can help mm. some of the negative free radical um, exposure from smoking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. But it is very much an, an allergen. Yeah. Yeah. I was always curious about that because my reaction was just so violent. So mm. I was just wondering, like, not being able to breathe is not a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that's what our panel has to say tonight about quitting smoking. We always like to talk about, you know, we always have a topic off of the top of every show. So as always, we are open for your general questions as well. We always want to be here for you. Dr. Tarman is, is here and uh, Christina Gordon, a naturopathic doctor. So any questions that you have tonight, we're going to take our first break. But when we come back, our toll-free lines will be open. So please give us a call tonight. What worked for you? Are you battling smoking? Do you want to give this up? Do you know what order to give it up in if you're battling another addiction? Mm. It's all open for you tonight. The toll-free lines will be open up right after this. Just a short break for you tonight, and we are back with Living Clean, Living Well here on CTS Television. It's Sunday night. Glad to have you with us. Dr. Vera Tarman, mm -hmm. our Medical Director of Health from uh, Reticent, is here, along with Christina Gordon, a naturopathic doctor. She is coming back as a return guest. It's always great to see you both. Uh, Dr. Tarman, just before we get into uh, the rest of our show this evening, mm -hmm. I know that you're a great speaker. You've got a couple of uh, mm -hmm. uh, various speaking engagements. Why don't you tell us about them? Uh, why don't we start off uh, the first one on Saturday, October the 19th. That was at Ryerson University if you're in the Southern Ontario region. Yeah, this is um, a, a debate that is, a, it's at Ryerson, uh, Ryerson University and it, it's a primarily for uh, social service students but it's actually uh, also for people who are just interested uh, either because they have an addiction history or they're just interested. Um, and uh, it, it really touches on the major uh, rift or, or, or controversy in all of addiction medicine which is um, or maybe not controversy, but thrust, the di the, one of the divides, which is um, abstinence-based therapy versus harm reduction therapy. And we're going to look at, we're going to have somebody from uh, CAMH, uh, Dr. Wayne, uh, pardon me, Wayne Skinner from CAM CAMH, who's going to be ta talking about the pros and cons or a better understanding of harm reduction. And then I'm going to be speaking about the um, an understanding of the abstinence model. And then we're going to see what happens. Mm -hmm. And then, Hopefully uh, with some fireworks. <laughs> That'd be interesting because you're calling it the great debate. Yeah, yeah, so that yeah. one 
is uh, Saturday, October the 19th at 10 a.m. And, and if you'd like free. more information, that free, yes. free is always good as well, yes. Ryerson University. And where can they go and find more information on that one? Uh, they can uh, just uh, email me uh, and uh, look at my website, addictionsunplugged.com. You can Perfect. find out about both of the talks. Okay. And the second one you've got coming up on November 23rd, and that'll be about food addiction? Yeah, that's the one on food addiction. And that's really just talking about uh, the, the sort of biology of uh, addiction in general and how food fits into that. Mm -hmm. Really just to show that uh, a lot of people um, are as addicted to food as uh, uh, alcoholics are addicted to alcohol or cocaine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Dr. Gar Gordon, how about you? I know that you run a thriving practice in, in Toronto, uh, the Shaolin Clinic, is it? Yes, um, I work at the Shaolin Health Centre. I have a practice there and I treat patients of all ages for many different things and I use different modalities. So botanical medicine, clinical nutrition, lifestyle and diet counselling, um, acupuncture and auricular medicine. Wonderful. are all tools I use in my practice. I, fi I find the area of naturopathic medicine just so fascinating on, on what we can do and it's great when you can combine the traditional medicine with naturopathic, at least that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's Most of my patients feel that way they too. They feel that way <laughs> too. Yeah. But yeah. I, I just, you know, to hear about some of the herbs that, you know, our, our ancestors knew about mm -hmm. and that, you know, we don't know so much about anymore and to see them reintroduced again and what they can do yeah. and to have it explained, you know, it's, yeah. it's no, like it's unlocking another tool in the toolbox of dealing with so many different things, isn't it's, it? It's amazing because um, a lot of people have a, um, an inaccurate view that as we get older, we just have to decrease our mobility and we have to just put up with, you know, aging. But um, I absolutely believe and I've seen in practice that if you use these herbs and, and different remedies at different times, that you can stay well and you can stay vital throughout mm -hmm. your life. Isn't that what it's all about? Mm -hmm. Let's go now to our toll-free lines. Let's open them up tonight. Line two, Dave is calling in from Midland. Hello there, Dave. Good to hear from you. Hi. Hi. Hi Dave. Have you got a question or a comment for my panelists tonight? Uh, um, I'm sorry. I was having a, a, a problem with my phone. How are you? Doing well. How about you? I'm good. Good stuff. Um, I'm calling in to talk about the tobacco addiction, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, I've tried to quit uh, several ways. I've used the patch and I've used uh, Wellbutrin and uh, Chantix and, mm -hmm. and uh, cold turkey. And, you know, I've managed to have some, some periods of success. You know, the longest I went was about two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And I started again. Now I'm trying this, this electronic smoke. Oh, yes. Does uh, Dr. Tarman know anything about those? We sure do. They call them e-cigarettes or electronic yeah, cigarettes. Yeah, you know, I, I, I know about them, but I've actually not um, treated anybody with with them. And um, I, my understanding is that uh, there, the, the uh, e-cigarettes um, in the states have nicotine, but they're not allowed to have them in Canada. So it's just the uh, mist. Uh, and uh, my understanding is that it's really it's just you're mimicking the uh, act of smoking. Uh, without actually smoking, so that that on that level, I guess it's better. I mean, how are you finding those? You know, I'm I'm finding that it's that it seems to be working for me. I'm I've been off the off the cigarettes. I think it's probably about nine weeks now, eight or okay. nine weeks. Yeah. And <clears throat> I'm using this this electronic smoke, and uh, you know, I've been observing some of some of my my friends and uh, that that are using it. And I seem to be using it less than they are. Uh, mm. uh, my the one fellow that I went and picked it up with, he went through like four vials of the of the the juice that you put in it mm. in I don't know three weeks or something, four weeks. And I've only gone through a quarter of a vial in, in eight weeks, so it seems to be working better for me. And I don't have that craving for the morning cigarette. And, oh, that's good. And I I might I might go like almost the whole day before I've even taken a drag off when I want to, you know, off the e-smoke. Uh -huh. Dave, there actually is that inhalant. So are you yes. actually feeling something coming in your lungs? Oh, yeah, you get a little bite in the back of your throat. Mm. Yeah. You get a bite in the back of your throat, and then you have that, you, you blow out the vapor, and uh, yeah. I, I believe you're actually getting getting uh, a bit of a fix of the nicotine. I'm, uh, I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, I've, I've seen somebody with them. Mm -hmm. um, 
I don't know whether or not it worked for them because they are fairly new. Yeah, they're fairly new. Well, the research is showing, uh, mind you, I don't know whose research it is. It might be the e-company, uh, the e-cigarette company itself, but they say that um, about 50-60% um, of the people are successful by six months in quitting. Hmm. Now, that's, those are good statistics, but I, I don't actually know where that, those statistics come from. And Dr. Gordon, I'd love for you to weigh in on this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Something, an inhalant like that, mm -hmm. well, being brought well, into the body. Yeah, so um, Dave, uh, what I think is amazing is that you've not been smoking for nine weeks. So mm -hmm. that is something to celebrate. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't recommend that people smoke things. Um, even, um, you know, some people use herbal cigarettes as they're trying yeah. to wean off uh, the addiction, but I don't recommend that um, just because you're still exposed to tar and you're still um, looped into that behavior yeah, mechanism exactly. yeah. that, yeah, where you, you need something to quell that, that sensation of stress. So um, I think that it's really great that you can get to the afternoon without using it, um, but you should try to think about other things that you can use in place. Um, when we were talking earlier about um, chewing on something like a toothpick, what came to mind to me is you can go to the health food store and you can buy um, licorice root and mm. you can chew on licorice root um, because the licorice will help your adrenal gland, so it'll help with the stress reaction. Mm. Um, it'll increase saliva. Mm. Um, also just, um, you know, drinking water. Um, the more water you drink, the more healthy you're going to feel. and mm -hmm. And you're help you flushing the toxins? Flushing mm -hmm. the toxins. Um, I tell my patients all the time, I, I don't actually know how well you are until we get you hydrated. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that you're doing, you're having great success, so that's great. But for those folks who haven't tried that mechanism, I, I don't recommend it. Can I add something? Yeah, go ahead. I, I, I thought you wanted to wrap this I, one up. I just wonder too, Dave, if, you, if, you, if you're that good that you can actually hold off until the end of the day to, before you have that puff of the uh, cigarette, I, I just wonder if you, you need that last little puff, if, that if it's not just a mental crutch and that maybe maybe you could let go of that because I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm more hopeful for you than maybe you are. I don't know. I, I, what do you think, thought. Dave? Well, I think you're probably right. but. Uh, you know, I have that that uh, addictive personality, mm -hmm. and it's like I want the easier, softer way yeah. with everything. Yeah. And uh, you know, I I think I probably am ready to let it go. Um, and I'm I'm thinking it's not going to be be very long before I do let it go and see yeah. what happens. Taper off of that. Would you be willing to try the licorice root, like Dr. Gordon's suggesting? I'm willing to try anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm, I'm, I, th I'm I think you could do it. Yeah. Um, That's great. Dave, thank you. It's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. A long time viewer of, of our show. Mm. And it's always great to hear you. And when I see your name pop up on screen, it's always lovely, Dave. Thanks so, so much for calling in tonight. And now let's go to line six. Pauline's calling in from Orangeville. Hi, Pauline. You're live on the show. Go ahead. Hi. How are you? Hi. Doing good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. The floor is yours. Go ahead. Yes, I wanted to call in because... Um, uh, I did try everything. I, I tried quitting smoking about five times, mm. and I smoked a pack a day for 46 years. Mm. And I did try an electronic cigarette, and I used it for about three months. And I quit two and, two and a half years ago, um, and I never crave it. I never even have a craving. In fact, I can't even stand the smell of it. Wow. So you've You've moved into that anti-smoking mode. <laughs> yeah, would you, would you say that, Paulina? What was it that worked for you that ultimately helped you get over the hurdle of, of not wanting a cigarette again? Well, first of all, I couldn't afford to do it anymore. Yeah, that is expensive. Uh, I found that it was too expensive. And I didn't like it anymore. Yeah. Mm. And I just felt sick every time I, I smoked a cigarette. Mm -hmm. It was like, what am I doing? You know, why, why am I doing this? Like, it, it was just crazy. Yeah. yeah, I know. I always like to hear success stories. So how long has it been, Pauline, since you've had a cigarette? 
two and a half That's years. That's great. Well done. Well done. Yeah. Well, you know what I always say, it, it, it's a great open forum of sharing, and I always say, please, the success stories, call in. Pauline, thank you so much for calling in tonight and telling us that you've had success and that there's hope out there, that mm -hmm. uh, this uh, very addictive substance, that you can do something to get past it and get it out of your life. I'm going to squeeze another one in before we take another break. Let's go to line seven, and Marsha's calling in from Toronto. Hi, Marsha. Go ahead. You're live on our show with Dr. Tarman and Dr. Gordon. Hello. Hi, Marsha. Go ahead, hon. You're on live with Dr. Tarman and Dr. Gordon. Uh, my name is Nasha, mm -hmm. and I was a smoker. Hello? Yes, yes, honey, we're listening. Go ahead. Do you have I a question a or a comment? And I started smoking as a joke. Like, mm -hmm. me and my friends used to make competition smoking. And I got addicted to smoking. And when I watched my life a day and I had a baby and I said, like, mm -hmm. it's, I watched my baby and I, cho I said, I need to choose between smoking or my baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I watched the cigarette in my hands, and I let the smoke going up in the air. And I saw the color gray smoke it sent in. And I said, my body is a temple of God. Mm. I don't have to be smoking that cigarette. Mm. I better than that. I'm a woman. I can do better than smoking. Mm. Yeah. Because when I watch other people used to smoke, and I used to feel, said, they look bad when they smoke sometimes. Why I doing it myself? And I pray to God. And from that time, I never take a cigarette and smoke. Until when I came to Canada, I had some problems and I went back smoking. Mm. And I got pregnant again. If my older baby, she's three months right now. Mm -hmm. And I said, Father, please help me. I have mercy upon me. I cannot do it no more. Mm -hmm. I love myself and I love my baby. And for, my, for me to live longer to take care of my children, please have mercy upon me. Mm -hmm. And I say, Nasha, you need to stop smoking from today on. Mm -hmm. And I never, ever put a cigarette in my mouth again. Mm -hmm. Since when I was three months pregnant, and from now on, my baby is three months, mm -hmm. and I never smoke again. And I don't feel like taking it. And every time, if I see a craving come to me, I say, and remember, God don't want you to use it. Your body Marcia, is the temple of God. Do not do it. I just love your strength. I love your conviction. Mm -hmm. And I love your success story. Thank you for sharing it with us tonight. I have to take another break here on Living Clean, Living Well. But when we come back, the phone lines are lighting up. Tell us your story. Mm -hmm. What worked for you? If you're struggling with it, I have Dr. Tarman here. And I have Christina Gordon, a naturopathic doctor. They've got it covered in any way that, uh, that they can. So please mm -hmm. uh, give us a call. I'm going to take a short break, but when we come back, more of your phone calls. Hello, I'm Ellen Campbell, the CEO and founder of the Canadian Centre for Abuse Awareness. As a charity, we depend on viewers such as yourself to support the programs for First Nations, women and children, anti-bullying and elder abuse. I invite you to visit our website, see what you can do to share. Any donation over $20 will receive a tax receipt. Thank you so much for all your support. Welcome back. It is a hot topic. Smoking cessation. Quitting smoking. Getting nicotine out of your life and your body. We've got a lot of phone calls to get to. Mm -hmm. Just before we get to more with Dr. Tarman and Dr. Gordon, I want to tell you about a very special event that the Canadian Centre for Abuse Awareness is putting on on October the 7th. It is their 20th anniversary gala. 20 amazing years of doing such great work in the area of abuse awareness. Our special guests, holy cow, a star-studded lineup for you uh, this year. 
John Derringer and the Q107 Morning Crew will be there. Always, always entertaining. Jim Cuddy from Blue Rodeo will be there. Alan Frew from Glass Tiger. We've got some NHL legends that are coming. Uh, it's going to be taking place in Woodbridge, Ontario, which is the suburb of Toronto for all of our wonderful viewers that are across Canada wondering where Woodbridge, Ontario is. It's just a suburb of Toronto. So if you would like to come uh, for tickets and more information, go to the website at abusehurts.com. That's the 20th anniversary gala. A star-studded lineup on Monday, October the 7th, starting at 6 p.m. And I'll be there as well. Hope that uh, you can join us. So we are talking tonight about quitting smoking, and it obviously has touched a nerve with many of you. My guests, Dr. Vera Tarman from Renaissance and Christina Gordon, who is a naturopathic doctor. So we have the traditional method, and we have the naturopathic method, and how they all can work together and work for you. So let's go back to the phone lines. Line one, Cynthia is calling in tonight from Ottawa. Hi, Cynthia. Hello. Hello. Um, have you got a question or a comment from my panelists? Uh, number one, um, I used laser therapy, uh -huh. and uh, the first time it worked for three weeks. I went back to smoking. I went back. I lasted almost five months, and as a matter of fact, tonight I said, okay, that's it. I'm going back, and we're going to do this for good, mm -hmm. and the, I find the people who smoke the electronic cigarettes, they don't really want to give it up. Mm. Uh, to me, if you really want to give this up, you really do. Um, I don't believe in Champex and the patch and all that stuff that you have to put into your body. Mm -hmm. I mean, you might as well smoke. Mm. But for me, the laser therapy worked, and I will be going back next week for it. And, and I just can't say enough good about the laser therapy for mm. people who really want to quit. Mm -hmm. have, you f have you guys heard of the laser therapy? Um, I think that that has something to do with laser and, at the ears, isn't ah. it? Cynthia, what, what is it with the laser therapy? What, how was it practiced? Uh, well, it, it, it's, well they, they, it's laser, it's not mm -hmm. needles. Yeah. yeah, it's a kind of acupuncture, yeah, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with that. Oh, it's, wonderful. Yeah, Go a, ahead, Dr. Gordon. It, no, no. Yeah. Um, it's a, well, not, a, not completely, but the, uh, the concept um, I use laser therapy as a part of auricular medicine. So because the ear mm. um, comes from the same embryonic tissue as your spinal cord, you can um, stimulate different points on the ear to quell nervous system sensations. Yeah. You can even help to drain the lungs and different organ systems so that it's not as uncomfortable. Um, weaning off cigarettes, mm -hmm. but it goes right into the mainframe. So I think yeah. that's that's fantastic. How does it work? Is it an actual machine that it's a, it's does a, laser. a light? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah. It's just a regular laser. And, and then I imagine that there's different um, potencies to mm -hmm. the laser, mm -hmm. and um, they maybe would stimulate different points right uh, uh, within the ear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is about bringing down the stress. Yes. So that you can cope better with not smoking. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Cynthia, thank you so much for informing us and mm. giving our doctors here the, the ability to be able to talk about it. This is great. One more thing that I, I never knew about either. Mm -hmm. Let's go to line three. Sean's calling in from Niagara Falls. Hi, Sean. Thanks for your patience tonight. Go ahead. You're live on the air. Hi. Um, so I have a question that's uh, unrelated to uh, smoking. That's fine. Go ahead. Um, so I, um, I recently came back from uh, a treatment center, and my goal was to uh, detox from methadone. Mm. Um, so I went, uh, I went off at 25 milligrams, um, and they, they brought me down with, uh, Suboxone, mm -hmm. um, and they tapered me with that. Um, anyways, my question is, um, ever since I've been back, I've just been having these post-acute withdrawal uh, symptoms, and, uh, it's just like a general sickness, I guess. Yeah. Um, and I was just wondering how long that something like that would last for, um, for methadone specifically. Well, how long has it been so far? When did um, you about leave? About two and a half months. Sorry? Uh, I've been off it for two and a half months now. Ooh. Two and a half months. Y you should be at the tail end of it then. Um, Suboxone even more so. Uh, I, I, usually it's uh, about two months, so you really should be near the end. Right. Okay. Yeah. What I would suggest, I mean, good for you for doing that, because it's hard to get off of methadone. And at 25 milligrams, is a pretty substantial amount. What I would suggest is that you go to your doctor, and you might be able to get um, 
um, a couple, um, some medication just to help ease some of that, like um, some clonidine or just just a, just uh, just just a temporary, like an, another three weeks or two th two three weeks, just to help you get over the last bit. But I think you're over the worst of it. From a naturopathic point of view, could you mm. give some suggestions? Well, I'm just wondering um, if there's um, other things going on with you, Sean. Um, you know, just from a really, um, you know, not to embarrass you, but are you having, um, are you sleeping well? Are you having regular bowel movements? Um, do you sweat sp spontaneously? Mm. Because all of those sort of symptoms can, can mean that your body, your physiology, is requiring something because mm -hmm. you know methadone um, really affects you know your bowel habits mm -hmm. and um, it causes a lot of internal heat and it damages the internal organs so it, so you need to per perhaps heal from that and some of the discomfort that you could be experiencing is, is just your body physiologically needing some extra nutrients to mm. decrease these side effects Sean, I hope that uh, that's good information for you. Uh, would you be willing to go see a naturopathic doctor? Uh, yeah, certainly. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm glad Dr. Gordon is, is here mm -hmm. as well because Dr. Vera, you know, she, she's able to give you the, the traditional point of view and, mm -hmm. and great information there that, you know, he should be over this, uh, mm -hmm. this plateau right now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe there's something extra that you could do if you were to go and look for a nat naturopathic doctor mm -hmm. and possibly do it uh, with some additional things holistically, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm sure it would help. And Sean, thank you so much for, you know, picking up the phone tonight because I did say off the top of the show tonight, even though we're talking about quitting smoking, mm -hmm. We are always here for any questions that you may have about any addiction or substance abuse problems. So thanks a lot for calling in. Let's go to line five now, and Gregory is on the line from Brampton. Hi, Gregory. Do you have a question tonight or a comment for us? Yeah, I had a question. Well, first off, uh, I can't use this phone properly, so I'm, I'm on the speakerphone. Okay. So I don't know how to turn this this big phone off, so I don't know if you can hear me or not. Yeah, Gregory, you're, you're coming in just fine. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I've got an alcohol addiction. That's the main one. Mm -hmm. Smoking is a secondary one. Mm -hmm. uh, what's my options? I'm sorry, you cut out there, Gregory. What's your what? My options. What are your options? So I guess uh, when you say options, Gregory, do you mean about, about quitting both of them, quitting them one at a time? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Should I quit, quit drinking first or quit smoking first? Mm -hmm. There well, we go. Yeah. I, I also, I want to go to rehab. I've got a rehab. I got um, listed in. Is that the best way to go to a rehab? Mm -hmm. Dr. Tarman? Uh, are you saying, is it better to go to is rehab? It, is, he's saying, is that the best thing to do? Should I go to rehab? Does he quit uh -huh. alcohol first, yeah. smoking sec second? What, is, what should he do? Um, it, well, it really depends on wh where you are. Um, I think that, in a way, it's easier to go to rehab because you'll get the support that you need. Uh, and it, Because quitting is really hard to do on your own. Uh, and if you're in a context where people are there and there are other people like you who are suffering at the same time, I mean, it's, it's helpful to be in a in a group and also you have counselors that will help walk you through. Um, so if you can, if you've got the, the, the capacity to do so, I would definitely say go to a rehab. It's not essential, but it's helpful. Uh, and then in terms of, uh, uh, w w w again, it depends on how much, uh, I think that it's important to quit the alcohol, number one, it's important to quit that. If you think you can also quit the smoking, do it at the same time, but if you don't, alcohol is the one that's gonna kill you first, so you wanna, you wanna stop that one for sure. One of the things that's unfortunate about rehabs is um, th sometimes there's a lot of smoking happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really hard to quit uh, when other people are smoking around you. And I've mm -hmm. seen people go into, into rehabs and pick up smoking because, you know, they put down their drug and it's all over and it's really hard to, to not uh, smoke. So, you know, the, the ideal situation is quit both, but go with what you're willing and what you're able. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dr. Gordon, did you have any words for advice for Gregory? Well, I think you're really courageous for, for calling and um, getting some support here tonight. Mm -hmm. um, I think that with overcoming any addiction, it's really important to have a community mm -hmm. and to feel like you have people who support you and understand you and will help you um, feel safe as you're changing your behavior. 
Um, I think if I were to, to recommend which would be the first to let go of, I, I agree with Dr. Tarman that absolutely you should try to abstain from alcohol because it, it, it will lead to other diseases and illnesses. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that it'll be a lot easier to um, abstain from, from smoke, like eventually to abstain from smoking if you're not drinking. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you can do it. It's very brave to even say that you want to attempt this. Yeah. Gregory, thank you so much for calling in and good luck on your journey. Let's go now to line two. Robert's calling in from Ottawa tonight. Hi there, Robert. How are you doing? We're doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Uh, I'm on cell phone. I'm a little nervous. First time uh, TV. Uh, it's okay. Phone caller. <laughs> you but, sound great. Uh, you, you can hear me fine? <laughs> yeah. So go ahead. Have you got a question? Yeah. I, I personally have quit smoking uh, cigarettes uh, over four months ago. Mm. And uh, the reason I quit, I'm now smoking those uh, vapor cigarettes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I turned on the TV, and I just, I didn't hear the whole topic, but I mentioned that, I heard the doctor mention uh, she doesn't recommend it. And I want to know why, why she doesn't recommend it. And uh, from what I understand, 93% of people who've used this have quit smoking completely. Mm. Um, you can... Use as much or as little nicotine as you'd like. You can mm. uh, slowly wean off of it. And from what I understand, the the, um, the habit form part of it, it is nicotine. But some researchers think it is the actual fumbling with the hand, putting the stick in the mouth, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as poisons that go in there, uh, there's only uh, FDA food-approved propylene glycol, vegetable glycerin and nicotine if you want it, mm. and natural extracts for taste. Now, nicotine can constrict your arteries to a degree, but like caffeine, it uh, can actually, it is used for such things as Alzheimer's, Tourette's syndrome, attention deficit disorder, That's true. Parkinson's. That's now, true. Uh, nicotine is also natural in many plant foods such as potatoes. And vegetables and uh, the way I'm looking at it the government is against it and I'll tell you why I think they are it's because of taxes they make a lot of money on taxes three four generations or three four government turns down the line mm -hmm. that government mm -hmm. will be paying for our will help those not this government that wants to tax money now Mm -hmm. Robert, you bring up some very good points there. Um, I would like to, uh, to have my doctors uh, to respond, and, and I'm a little heavy right now as far as getting into the next commercial break. So, Dr. Tarman, uh, do you want to start, and then we'll go to Dr. Gordon. Okay, I'll just say really quickly, you, you raised a really interesting point there, Robert, about um, uh, nicotine and the use of it in a, in a positive way for mm -hmm. mental illness uh, particularly. It's absolutely true. Um, people have talked about using it even as a patch for uh, schizophrenia, for example. So that's an interesting uh, angle that you've introduced. Um, I, I wouldn't say that I'm against it. I have a preference for um, uh, not using uh, something like an e-cigarette. But uh, if, if, I mean, if it worked for you, I, it's all, it, it, it's really, here, here we are with the harm reduction. It's reduced harm. You're, 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 you're taking in something, even nicotine, um, but you're not, with, it doesn't have all the uh, chemicals that cigarettes do. So yes, it's better. Um, and if you actually get off of smoking, it's perfect. What, what I'm fearful of is that uh, uh, it ends up being, I mean, I know people who are addicted to nicotine gum. Now that's what they chew and they chew and they chew and they chew. That's not all that much helpful, although it's better, I guess, than smoking. So it depends on what angle you're taking. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. I'm going to give it to you. Um, basically, I agree with you and, and you as well, Robert. If it's working for you, if it's decreasing um, the frequency that you're, you know, using nicotine, then that's fantastic. And um, it sounds like also um, you feel empowered by your ability to manage this addiction. And, and that's really what it is all about. Um, people feeling confident within themselves and proud of the lifestyle choices that they make for themselves. Um, I personally don't recommend it because it's not within my scope of practice to recommend such a thing. Mm. But um, I really do appreciate you sharing with us your success with it. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for calling in.
and Robert really appreciate the comments tonight. We're going to take another short break, but when we come back, more of your phone calls. Living Clean, Living Well continues right after this. Hello, I'm Ellen Campbell, the CEO and founder of the Canadian Centre for Abuse Awareness. As a charity, we depend on viewers such as yourself to support the programs for First Nations, women and children, anti-bullying and elder abuse. I invite you to visit our website, see what you can do to share. Any donation over $20 will receive a tax receipt. Thank you so much for all your support. Statistics state that it is likely you know a victim of abuse. It could be a friend, a relative, a colleague. It could even be you. One in three girls and one in five boys will be sexually abused before they reach the age of 18. Please give them hope. Help us make it stop. Go to AbuseHurts.com and give to the Canadian Centre for Abuse Awareness. Welcome back to Living Clean, Living Well. We've certainly had a real spirited discussion tonight about the effects of nicotine and quitting smoking. We've got another phone call to get to tonight. My guests are Dr. Vera Tarman and Christina Gordon, naturopathic doctor. Let's go to line six now. Susan's been holding patiently. She's on the line from Bolton tonight. Hi, Susan. Go ahead. Hello. Hi, Susan. It's your turn. Have you got a Bolton? question or a comment for my panelists? Yes. Thank you very much. I called you a couple of weeks ago. It was a different subject, but um, That's okay. I love your show, and I please keep going on because it's fantastic. Anyways, tonight you can hear me, right? Mm -hmm. I sure can. Yep. Okay. Tonight I'm calling your uh, your your your, your uh, subject is smoking, and uh, I want to tell the the public my view. Um, I live with an elderly, elderly sister who's um, on oxygen. Mm. Okay, so. Um, I still smoke. I'm trying to quit, but my sister is on oxygen. She quit, she's seventy, going to be seventy nine. She quit smoking when she was seventy. Mm. I just want the younger people to understand. You know, it's not going to get better <laughs> if you don't quit smoking. It's going to affect you, and mm. um, I live with it. And I and she's on oxygen, mm -hmm. and if. If, if you think you're going to, you know, get through this without any, any, what do you, you know, any, you know, like, it's not going to, it's not going to help. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Oh, that's okay, Susan. We were listening to you. Um, you, you bring up a very good point. Uh, the effects of, mm -hmm. of what it's doing to your body and, and what's going to happen down the road. Um, but then again, we don't always do what's right or best for our no, bodies, do we? No, I mean, I mean, you know, it's, it sounds like your sister's probably got some form of emphysema, and that's a very common um, consequence of uh, smoking. But you, you know, p smokers know they know that, that that this is what's ahead of them. I mean, I, I I haven't even bothered talking about all of the horrible things that can happen because you already know what they are. Uh, the question is, how are you going to deal with this? Uh, despite that, that's what addiction is. You do something despite your better knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Susan, are you thinking of quitting? Me? Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, mm. I shouldn't be smoking. Like I said, my sister is has pulmonary fibrosis, and mm. and um, it's a terminal disease. And mm -hmm. if you don't take care of yourself, it's you know everybody who smokes, they, they think they're, you know. I know words of caution about you know what can mm -hmm. what can happen to you and Susan I, I'm so glad that you know that you picked up the phone tonight and and put it out there because mm -hmm. you know sometimes we pussyfoot around the issue a little bit too much I mean 
we're facing dire consequences mm -hmm. if if people continue to smoke, even secondhand smoke. Yeah, um, Dr. Tarman, lay it on the line. What are some of the things you can get? Well, you, you, uh, you can get emphysema, you can get pulmonary fibrosis, you can get uh, cardiovascular disease, you can lose your limbs, you know, amputation. Uh, you can uh, uh, develop impotence uh, for men. You can, um, it, uh, it, it, f for a woman, uh, we, had, we had the mother who uh, uh, quit smoking when she was pregnant. It can lead to, um, um, you know, uh, smaller babies, basically. Um, it, it, it has a lot of negative consequences. There aren't a lot of positive ones, really. And lung cancer. Well, except for the that occasional. That took my oh, yeah, Of course, of course, lung cancer, the, yeah. the biggest one. Yes, yeah. and throat cancer and esophageal cancer and... Mouth cancer? Yes, mouth cancer, yeah. yeah. So, there, you know, it, the hard and cold facts are, are mm -hmm. pretty hard to, to take, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, but then you're dealing with, with the, the addiction, the cravings, the, you know, you're, co yeah. you're looking for ways to reduce stress. From a naturopathic point of view, what would be a way to, to do something that, that would reduce stress? Uh, because, you know, a lot of people smoke for, for stress relief, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, I think the, the main thing is to um, take more, make sure you're getting a good night's sleep. And if you don't sleep well, um, it's very easy to take calcium and magnesium to get a deeper sleep, which also helps balance your central nervous system. So I think if you're somebody who knows that you're prone to stress, you, you need to get at the root of that. Um, it can be too difficult to face giving up smoking right off the bat. So just, okay, I know I, st I smoke too much, and, and you should, um, s you know, put your cigarettes in one corner of the house, an ashtray in another, <laughs> a lighter in another, so that each time you go to get these items, you're thinking about, is this really what I want to do to manage my stress? So sleep, um, good diet. So if it is about an oral thing, you know, if a, a patient recommend, says to me, I want to quit smoking, I say, okay, well, you need to eat more fiber. You need to start eating more cauliflower, broccoli, kale, carrots. Is that all about cleansing the body? It, it's all about cleansing the body. And when you eat those foods, you will actually be giving your body the endorphins that it needs to manage stress naturally. And endorphins make us feel good, right? They make mm. us feel good. And it, it, Legitimately it, it, so. Mm. Can I add one more thing too? The other thing that, that people may not realize is uh, they, uh, pe people will smoke because they uh, feel that it, it, it makes them calm, it, it chills them, it, it relaxes them. But smoking is actually a stimulant. It actually raises your blood pressure, it makes your heart rate go faster. And what's really happening is, is yes, the person is getting calmer, but what they're actually doing is, is they're taking in a deep breath, they're holding the breath, they're exhaling slowly, it's that process of deep breathing that's actually what's making them relaxed. So it, it, hmm. all, good for you if you want to go out good for a point. cigarette break. Go out there and have deep breathing breaks. Just don't have the cigarette with it. And yes. away from the door and all the other secondhand yes. smoke. Right? Stretch exactly. out your reaction time. Uh -huh. Stretch out your reaction time. And a lot of people who are mm -hmm. addicted to these substances create stressful situations so that they feel like they earn their, mm -hmm. their cigarette. Mm -hmm. So we just have to be very mindful of the choices we're making and make long-term choices. And also, you were talking earlier about the oral fixation. Mm -hmm. uh, my father was one that stopped cold turkey on New Year's Eve. He just announced to everybody, that's it, I'm quitting smoking. And for years, he carried around a bag of peppermints. Mm -hmm. Always had the peppermints. But you mm -hmm. were saying earlier, Dr. Tarman, that, that you, you are not recommending that, that we switch to candies. No, because we have this, this phenomenon, which is pretty common, where people will gain it's up to, you know, up to 10 to 15 pounds after they quit smoking, and that's often a reason why people quit or, or, or restart because they don't want to gain that weight. And uh, th that has actually nothing to do with the food. So if you're adding the food piece on top of that, then uh, uh, you're just essentially creating another addiction. That's the, you know, that's the other thing. I would mm -hmm. say I don't want to quit smoking because I know I'm going to gain weight exactly. and I just don't want to deal with it. Yes. Uh, when you have patients that talk about that, what would be an answer for them? Well, basically we're balancing the whole body. So um, you shouldn't really have those, that problem if you're eating healthy fiber, if you're eating healthy food choices, um, and you're really healing your, your intestines and your mucous membranes once you begin to abstain from smoking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so lots as we of water. Uh, and lots of water. How many glasses of water? There's so many different. <laughs> yeah. I, can, I can give you um, an you. equation. Yeah, um, do. yeah, I tell people to have. So if you weigh 120 pounds, you need to drink half your weight in ounces. So you need to <laughs> drink 60 ounces of water a day. That's 
approximately two liters in divided doses because mm. you want to take it um, about four ounces every half an hour. Mm. And you can look at your, take your hand, pull up your, your skin, mm. and if your skin stays tented, then you know you need to drink more water. Mm. I do. Hey, I'm, not, I'm not tenting, so that's good. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so say that again. You take your weight, divide it in half, and put it into ounces. Correct. Your weight in pounds. Weight in pounds. Okay, yeah. so not mm. kilograms. Yeah. Weight in pounds. Mm. And, then, and then drink half of that. Also look at your urine, and if it's very dark colored, you know you need to drink more water. Mm -hmm. Well, my one doctor once said, well, would you rather be a, a stagnant pond or a cool running brook? Mm -hmm. I said, well, that brings up a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How about uh, in the area of, of, okay, they've made that commitment, going to quit smoking, the pounds are going to probably come on. Uh, Dr. Tarman, uh, uh, you said that there's, a, that there's been a lot of medical study that's been done on, on this. Yeah, you even the, called it a phenomenon. Yeah, so. yeah. The, the, the latest is that, uh, is, it, is it possible that actually um, when you quit smoking, you change the gut flora so that there's... Um, uh, which fosters um, uh, uh, very efficient bacteria that, that essentially make you gain weight. And so there's a, it, it has nothing to do with whether you're eating too much or not, but I'll bet you if you can find particular foods um, to counteract that, that would be a, a, good, a good thing to do. And I don't know what they are because that's out of my realm. But it's, it, it's the idea that it isn't actually just the metabolism or, or eating extra food. It's got something to do with the flora and the gut. And what is flora? Oh, the bacteria in so the it's gut. Bacteria. Yeah. As, in other words, uh, gut the bacteria cause obesity or have some role in obesity oh. or, or weight gain. So, uh, in regards to flora, I've got about 30 seconds. Can you tell us <laughs> from a naturopathic point of view, what can we do to, to get the flora working the right way? Yes. Yeah, so, the, in, in your fridge, the easiest thing would be yogurt or sauerkraut. Mm. Um, but in my practice for my patients, I recommend human microflora. Um, to recolonize the, mm. the flora and, and avoid something called leaky gut syndrome. The other thing is do not take plant-based probiotics. They are not healthy and they're widely available. And what, what sort stores. of names are we looking at, plant-based probiotics? Like, like, so do you just look on the you label? Look at, yeah, read okay. the label and that's the best way to know you mm. want human microflora. Yeah. And most of it comes though from bovine. Mm. Mm. Well, some real good food for thought. Mm. Uh, which is great. We're going to be back to wrap up this edition of Living Clean, Living Well with Dr. Tarman and Dr. Gordon right after this short message. We'll see you in a second. So we are back, and as I was mentioning earlier, quite a spirited discussion tonight about quitting smoking, and obviously it strikes a chord with many of you. I'm so glad that we had an opportunity to do this show, and once again to feature uh, the great things that happen within traditional medicine and also nat naturopathic medicine. So Dr. Gordon, from your point of view as a holistic healer, could you tell us what people can do if they're wanting to quit smoking? Yep. Um, the first thing you should do is write a list of all the reasons you want to quit and review it every day. Um, keep in mind that you'll be switching one behavior and you should put in other good healthy behaviors. Mm -hmm. So whether it be reading, um, joining a book club, exercising, mm -hmm. um, there's Things running like groups that you can join, um, acupuncture and lifestyle counseling can also be very beneficial. Mm -hmm. Dr. Tarman, your final thoughts. Um, yep. Well, there's a, there, there's a treatment for any any stripe of, um, of tr a th a therapy that you want to approach. So there's there's cold turkey, and then there's all sorts of other types of things. There's a nicotine patch. There's a Champex. There's there's a Zyban. There's hypnosis. <laughs> there's there's a lot of things out there. Good for you for I mean yeah. yeah basically. So a lot of great tools. Dr. Tarman, Dr. Gordon, thank you so much for joining us, and I will see you next Sunday.
Living Clean, Living Well has been brought to you by Freedom From Addiction and is a presentation of the Canadian Centre for Abuse Awareness.